four. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Did you hear about the game uh, fish department at the uh, at the Illinois Department of Fisheries and Natural Resources is trying to develop a new breed of fish. They took a coho and they crossed it with a walleye. Oh, they wow. call it the, they call it the coho. It was great taste. It fought like heck, and it wasn't very but it wasn't very large. So they crossed it with a muskie and they called it Kowalski. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best at everything. It fights hard, it tastes great and it grows up to 50 inches long. The only problem is they're having trouble teaching it to swim. <laughs> 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 oh, no. and, and Joseph D missed that one. <laughs> Tell it again. I just got in. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to review the recording. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, the tip of the day, folks. Um, tip of the day is how do you change or work with your iPad um, cloud storage plan? Most all of us have a cloud storage plan, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Black. <laughs> Black back where you can see the uh, <clears throat> the iPhone and iPad there, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So if if we want to change our storage plan. <clears throat> we open settings and I'll, I'm going to you're in now and how you're in now and how I'm going to switch control here to my iPad. Okay, the reason that is is because okay I, I right, somebody's, somebody's talking and is, is it muting themselves um, if we go to settings right and we click the, your name at the top of the settings menu. This is both the iPhone and the iPad. <laughs> and then we click on iCloud. And they have a nice little feature there that says manage. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna mute folks. Mute everybody. <laughs> yeah. If you want to speak, you have to unmute yourselves. Okay. And if you click manage storage, it shows you how much storage your current plan is. And it actually shows you how much of that you're using. So you notice I'm using 12 gig of my 50 gig plan. So I've got lots of space. If I want to change that, I click the 50 gig plan. So by the way, if you did that and you were using four gigs, you could actually cancel your plan, right? But I have a... a 50 gig plan and it shows a check mark on it. If I wanted to change that to a 200 gig plan, I would click here. To terabyte plan, I would click here. It doesn't give me the option to go below 50 because I have more than five. <clears throat> and they give you five gigabytes for free. Okay. 
Any questions about that? No, yes, well, we're all familiar with that. <laughs> okay, I do have a question. Go ahead. Um, why is your, my, I'm looking at mine, I have lots and lots of photos. If I'm using Google Photos, I shouldn't have that many on my actual device. In the iCloud, How do I, you, in the cloud, you mean? Yeah. Let's let's talk a minute about how this works. When from the time you turn on and start saving your photos in the cloud, every picture you take goes into the Apple Cloud. So it gradually builds up over time. <clears throat> when you exceed 4.9 gigabytes of, of storage for your stuff. Apple tells you, you better expand it, we're running out of space. And that's what I have done here. <clears throat> now, what Sharon has done is she said, gee, I want to put my photos in the Google Cloud. So she installed a Google application called Google Photos on her iPhone or iPad. And what Google Photos does is it says, oh, I see all you, you have all these pictures in the iCloud. I'm going to take a copy of those, stress the word copy, and I'm going to put those in the Google Cloud. So every picture you take now first goes into the iCloud. And then when you start the Google app on your device, it says, oh, I haven't updated the last four you've taken. And it, and it takes a copy of those and puts it in the Google Cloud. Now, a couple of things you can do now. You can, when you delete it from the iCloud, by the way, it deletes it from your phone or your iPad or your Mac, okay? So the iCloud houses the pictures and they're synchronized across all devices. So whatever you do on one, it does on the others. So you can delete it from the phone and it's still in the Google Cloud. Now here's the rub. If you delete it from the Google Cloud, thinking, well, I have it in the iCloud, I really don't need it in Google any longer. Google will go back and delete it from the iCloud. Let me repeat that. If you have your pictures in both the iCloud and Google Cloud, and you delete it from the Google Cloud, Google will delete it from the iCloud as well. So Sharon, it, it, you have to physically delete them from your phone after you put them in the, in the Google Cloud. Does that answer your question? And that won't take them out of Google. What I always do is say, I caution everybody. I, I hopefully nobody changed the rules since I, um, since I discovered how this works. I would take a picture and I would delete it from the iCloud and then tomorrow see if it's in Google Cloud. Then I would take a picture in the Google Cloud that I really don't need and I would delete it and I would see if it deletes from the iCloud tomorrow, it's gone tomorrow. Okay, just to verify before you do any mass additions or deletions or get rid of those nice pictures you want to make sure you didn't lose. Okay? Yes, so that's, that's, that's the way it used to work. <laughs> and I think that's the way it's still working. So I take it you do delete them off of your device because you don't have much in the cloud and I've got over 50 gigabytes just in photos. Um, how many photos do you have? <laughs> like 11,000, I think. <laughs> I have 3,000. <laughs> okay. So 11,000 would probably fill it up. Yep. <laughs> I only have 3,000. That's the difference. Okay. Okay. I just pay 299 and then don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. 200 gigabytes should cover you for a while. I have a general question for everybody. If it says 200 gigabytes, and that's all, 
and each picture takes one million bytes and, and a picture takes between one and two million bytes, or, okay, megabytes. How many pictures can you put in 200 gigabytes? Nobody's raising their hand. <laughs> oh, come on. Go ahead. 20,000. 200,000. Yeah. 200,000. You can, in one gigabyte, you can put a thousand pictures. Okay. Now that's on average. Many of them take much more than that. And depending on how you're saving them could be much more. Let's say they take two, right? So it's a hundred thousand pictures in two hundred gigabytes. All right, so there's plenty of room and Sharon said it correctly. If I get 200 gigabytes, I should be okay for as long as I click the shutter. <laughs> and the first thing I do is turn off live. I don't like that option. So that saves. You turn off what? Live. The live setting. Yes, of course. All right, everybody. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna spend today basically. Um, let me go back here. Okay, I'm gonna pretend like we just got our new devices and we're not familiar with them. And we're gonna build up from there. Now, many of us are, are experienced at this. Some of us are relatively new. And I always say, if you haven't had a beginning class you, uh, from other people and you've learned it on your own, it's like a collage with partial, with its, with its a picture or a collage picture with only a couple of the things filled in. And what we'll try to do in the next few sessions here is fill in all the, the blanks, if you will. So we're looking, if we look at our devices and we pick them up, okay? And if you're wondering what device you have, if you go to settings on any of your devices, and again, you go to general, and then you go to about. And the third item down in the about menu is the model name. And it shows you what you have. Like you're looking on my iPad at the uh, third generation iPad Air. If I go to my iPhone, and I go to general, about, and it says I'm looking at my iPad Pro 12, okay? Also on the back of your device in the very, very fine print, there's a serial number for your phone. They usually start with A, so if you have a magnifying glass, you can track it down that way and then type that number into the internet and you'll, it will tell you what phone you have or what iPad you have. If everybody has an iPhone or I, everybody hopefully has an iPhone or iPad in front of them and you lift it up, you hold it in your hand, you have more compute power in your hand than it took to launch our astronauts. I'm going to uh, I'm going to switch the screen back.
to me. Okay. Here's an iPhone, right? When the iPhone usually has a uh, ballistic glass on it, many of us put a screen of some kind to protect it. I do that on my iPhone. I do not do it on my iPad, right? If you're holding it, by the way, you have more compute power in your hand than it took to launch our astronauts. And all of us remember Walter Cronkite, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> you probably remember where we were when the men landed on the moon. You have in your hand more compute power than all the computers that, that helped them land on the moon, right? The Houston Space Center in the second floor was an entire bank of computers. More compute power. You can do two billion, B as in boy, additions in second on this thing or this thing, right? So the technology has come a long way. How much memory is in here? Anybody know what yours is? If you don't, and you were looking at settings, general and about, yes, it tells you your capacity. So for example, my iPhone capacity is 128 gigabytes. And as we talked earlier, that is a lot of storage. You can put a lot of pictures in there. Okay. By the way, did you know that one picture takes the same space as a book? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately, you know, a, a 300 page book. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Well, that that's just makes the point that texts, emails and things like that don't take as much space on your device as let's say pictures do. So you can have, like some of us, have a lot of email on our device, mentioning no names, of course. <laughs> um, and it doesn't really take up that much space as, as far as gigabytes on your device, okay? So you have memory on it. You should probably know how much memory you have. So you should probably take a look at that. It has a bunch of antennas in it, right? They looped antennas inside the devices. There's, there's at least two for talking to the cell phone towers and those particular radio waves. And then there's some, yes, go ahead, Ann. Uh, where would I find that now? I'm, I'm in settings. General. Yes. About. Yes. And you scroll down a little ways on your about menu where it says yeah. songs and videos and toward the bottom there, it says capacity. Oh, I see. Oh, thank you. Oh, good. Good question. Oops, just I can't. A comment, just a comment, Bill, that in the 1960s, the first computer I worked on had a total capacity of 16K and uh, at 16, occupy the space of the dining room table. <laughs> exactly, 16K, that's thousand. And now we're talking about 16 gigabytes, <laughs> right? The 16 is, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Anna. Okay, but I have 16 gigabytes. This is an old phone, is that still good? It works. Now you don't have a lot of room to do things because no. the operating system takes a lot of space. How much does it say you have available? 364 megabytes. Right, so you're almost full. Yes. Yeah. So you That's why I could Okay. Go ahead. That's why I can't download the updates. Correct. <laughs> okay. Probably time to think about a new one. 
<laughs> Sorry about that, but <laughs> and if you're looking at a particular new one uh, and you're cost sensitive, get the if you're, if you're talking about a phone, the the SE is the the go to one right now. SE. Yeah, iPhone SE. That's what I have, the old one. Right. This would be the new one. And and kick it up to sixty four gigabytes when you get it. Okay. All right. Since I'm, I don't mean to keep no, up. Okay, you had mentioned uh, a, um, a secure way of keeping your photos, just in case something happens to the Google Photos or iCloud, was to have uh, a, an exterior um, um, device. Uh, device. Yes, and what was that again? <laughs> I've written it down a hundred times, but I forget. It's okay. I'm trying to. I'm going to see if I can find mine. Yes, it's called a little flash drive. It looks something like, let me hold it up closer to the camera. Yep. Okay, where it has this connection on one end and that plugs into your device, your iPhone or your iPad. And it has this one on the other end, which is our familiar USB connection. Right. Okay. And you can get those on Amazon at Best Buy, okay? And I recommend getting 64 gigabytes one of those, right? I think this one's 32, <laughs> and I got it a long time ago. And once you get it, it will say in the package, you need to put an app on your device. So you go to the Apple store, get the application, plug this in, and it usually, it'll come up or you bring up the application and it'll say, well, what would you like to do? Would you like to load all your photos on here? And you say, yes. Do you want to delete them from your device? Once I load them on here, you can say yes or no. So you could copy them or cut them and paste them, put them on here, okay? And then you can plug the other end. I kind of like this, by the way, you put the other end into your computer and then you can download them on your computer. The reason I like this is I can see and feel this. <laughs> it's not some cloud somewhere. And I know my photos are on here, so I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, thank you. But so if you take them off, you take them off your iPhone onto your uh, the um, flash drive, yeah. then they're gone, they're gone from the uh, cloud too. That's correct. Yes. They're going from the iCloud as well. So it have to it depended, depended on not losing that little gizmo. <laughs> well, I would take this little gizmo and plug it into my computer then. Of course. All right, and then put them on my computer. So now I have them belt and suspenders, right? I have them here, I have them on my computer, and I have them in the iCloud if I, if I kept them there, okay? Uh, thank you. So, so Bill? Is oh. the main reason for the flash drive as a backup? Yes. Okay. Is that just a regular flash drive or no. is it the new one they're touting for photos? No, this, this, is, this is one that has the two connectors on it, right? Regular flash drive only has that one. This one has the, the lightning connector on the other end. Right. Yes, I have two of the two or three of those kind, but they are now advertising one that's strictly for photos. And it says you plug it into your system and it finds all the photos everywhere. System being where? Computer? I believe so. Okay. So this isn't, this doesn't have, that has to be software for that. So you have to have an application for that somewhere. I know the um, when I when I installed Google Photo Google Photos on my computer, it asked that question. It says, "Where do you want me to look and find all your photos?" And I just said, "The whole computer." Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> there are some buttons on this thing, <laughs> right? Most important one we call the power button. 
And if you click it once, ooh, well, that one, that one's dead. If you click it once, it goes to sleep and you click it again and it wakes up. And you see the terminology I used there was sleep and wake. So when I tap the power button and just tap it, it puts your device to sleep. It doesn't turn it off. So your device is still on, but you're not seeing any um, screen. And the reason you would want to turn it off is the screen uh, takes the most power. It, it absorbs the most battery of any of the things you do on your computer. So to display something takes a lot of power. To turn it off, off, to turn it off, on some devices you press and hold the power button If you don't have a home button, if you do not have a home button on your device, you press and hold the volume up and power button at the same time, okay? Let me share my screen again and show you what the result of that is. All right, so I'm looking at my uh, screen right now. I sweep up on the device without a home button and it has the home screen. On, on many, if our devices has a home button, you press and hold the power button and it comes up with a slide to power off screen. If you do that on the, a device that does not have the home button, and you press and hold it, it comes up with Siri. Good morning, Siri. Good morning. All right. In order to power down your device, you press and hold the volume up and the power button concurrently. And it comes up with that screen. That's what it looks like on the iPad. That's what it looks like on the iPhone. I do recommend that you power them down completely, slide the power off at least once every week or two weeks. Is anybody going to ask me why? Oh, well, that student ask why. <laughs> if all of us have, um, well, not everybody. Many of us have a junk drawer. And if you straighten out the junk drawer, things are much easier to find and, and get to until it gets all junky again. Well, turning, completely powering down your device cleans up the junk drawer of the operating system and makes it work more effectively when you power it back up. So I'm gonna to slide to power off my phone. And I wait a minute for it to completely power down. And then I press and hold the power button until the apple appears on the screen. Now, some of us get kind of anxious at this point because when we press and hold that power button, it seems to take a long time for the apple to show up. Just keep holding the power button and the apple will show up on the screen. I'm waiting for my apples on the screen right now and it's coming up. Okay. So again, you should do that once every couple of weeks.
Of course, there's a power, there's a volume up and volume down on your, on your device. Now, many of you, uh, it's on the side of the device over here. Now, those of you who have an iPhone, you also have a little switch there. It's called the church switch. Okay, you have to, if you have a cover on it, you have to use your fingernail to turn it down. And then you can look at it and you'll see a little red on one side of the switch. And then you turn it back up again. And that, again, allows sound to come out. So it's a mute switch. When I go to the theater, that's all I do is click that. And now my phone is muted. It will still vibrate. So you can feel it, but you're not going to be bothering other people. Just remember to turn it back on again so, you're, <laughs> so you get, can hear phone calls and things that happen. OK? There are two or more cameras on your device, a front facing camera and one or more rear facing cameras. The new iPad Pro has three cameras, right? I'm sorry, the new iPhone um, has three cameras. And the iPad Pro, I think, has at least two, OK? The iPhone has a flashlight back there. And I, I urge you all to get used to using it. It's really cool. And you can get to the flashlight by saying, Siri, turn on the flashlight. OK, I turn torch on. <laughs> Siri, turn off flashlight. Done. All right. That's the easiest way to get the flashlight, right? There are a multitude of other ways as well. So there's memory in here. Oh, I was going through the antennas, right? It talks to the cell phone towers, right? So that's the long distance antennas. The other way it gets on the internet is through Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi antennas talk to the routers that are around your home or in the restaurant you're in. And they usually, ex you can usually extend or be about a hundred feet from those particular router modem devices. All right, so far so good. So cell phone antennas, cellular communications, which allows you to make a phone call and get on the internet. Wi-Fi allows you to get on the internet and you can make Wi-Fi phone calls, but that's a later class, okay? There's another set of antennas <clears throat> called Bluetooth. And many of, them, many of us use Bluetooth with our automobiles. When we get in our automobiles, you can actually connect your phone to the automobile's um, speaker system and either answer phone calls through it or uh, play your music through it, for example. <clears throat> Some of us have external keyboards on our device and that's a Bluetooth connection to your device. All these different antennas help us get to a wireless environment. <clears throat> There are also external speakers that you can communicate to your device, that communicate with your device through Bluetooth. So you can have much, much more um, I hate uh, the word professional quality music coming from your device if you're playing through a more uh, expensive speaker system. And the last set of antennas is called near field communications. And they're only on your iPhones 
And if you set up and put your credit card in the application called Wallet on your phone, you can take your phone to Publix and bring up the application and just swipe your phone over the top of the card reader and it will register your credit card. And then for those of us who have the Apple Watch, you can do the same with your Apple Watch. And is that impressive to some of the kids? <laughs> if you bring up the credit card and go like that and it pays your bill, all right? <clears throat> So that's the antennas that are in your device. So we've got the buttons, the home button. Some of us have, others of us have the little sweep. By the way, if, you're, if you just got a device that requires the sweep and it's not as convenient for you to use and you're trying to get used to it, if you'll send me a note, I will send you a printout of the gestures for the uh, phones that don't have a home button or the iPads that don't have a home button. So if you just send me one, I have one that describes, well, you used to push the home button to do this. Here's what you do now, kind of thing. <clears throat> have you updated it recently or is the, if I have one from a year ago or so, it's probably- the one from a year ago is still accurate though, so, I believe. <laughs> Okay, everybody, are we good so far? Oh, the, the, other, the other thing, a couple of things. Physically, if your buttons are hard to push and you have a case on them, I urge you to get a new case. You know, I, I teach a lot of classes and I'm, I'm going through this session and, and some, People are trying to push their volume up or volume down or the, the power button. And they're having to push really hard to get them to work. And the case shouldn't be that way. I have a nice silicon case here. The buttons are rough, really easy to use. So if you're having an issue there, the cases that protect your phone if at 100 meters below the water, probably the buttons are hard to push. <laughs> but I would opt to get a little less protection for the phone and a little more ease of use. And before you buy a new case, check it out, right? See how hard the buttons are to push. Hey, Bill? Yes. I have a question I'd like to ask to see if you have an answer to. I have a, what's called Omeron blood pressure device. It takes yes. the blood pressure. And then there is an app that will sync the blood pressure cuff with my iPhone. Yes. So to do that, you've got to pair the two. Correct. But periodically it becomes unpaired or it stops working. And I have to do the pairing all over again to get it to work. So is there anything to do to prevent that from happening? When you find out, let me know. <laughs> I have the same problem. <laughs> yeah, when they unpair and sometimes getting them to pair again can be a real, each device requires a little different technique. Yep. So yes, I, I don't have an answer for you there, Jim. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, <clears throat> I have a, a scale that does the same thing. You get on the scale and it registers it on the phone if the pairing didn't get lost. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. When we turn on our devices, now I'm gonna share my screen again. All right. So everybody see my iPhone and iPad there? Yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> what are these guys called? 
Icons. They're called icons. They might be called apps. In a previous generation, we would have called them programs. Okay. So how many can I put on this page? I can put 20 on this page, right? And I can, <clears throat> and I can put my finger here and draw it that way and go to the next page. And a couple of things happen. It goes to the next page, <coughs> excuse me. And at the bottom here, you'll see that the dots, right? I have, I have four pages because I have four dots and I'm on the second page. And I sweep and I go to the next page and go to the next page. And that's the last page I have, right? I could put my tap my finger right there and I would, go back a page at a time and end up going back to page one. On our devices, we can sweep one more and get to what's called widgets. Now on your iPhone, works a little differently. I'll switch to my iPhone there. I have three pages there. And I put my finger here and I draw it this way. And I draw it this way one more. On the iPhones, you have one more page you can go to. I have all my apps listed here and I have around 300. But if I go one more page, whoops, if I go one more page to the left, I get something called the app library. And this shows all the apps I have, whether they're on the home screen or not. And with, I think the last iteration, the one before the last, uh, they added this particular feature so that you can delete an app from the home screen and it's still on your device in this app library. <clears throat> if you wanted them in alphabetical order, you could tap where it says app library at the top and you get a complete listing of all your applications. And you can click the letter W over here and it'll take me to the W, the W's if you will, okay? What Apple has done in the app library is they've grouped them in a way they think is appropriate. And you may not be able to find what you want by their grouping. If you're looking for a particular application, you go to the here, to the app library, you tap at the top and then tap again. And if I'm looking for map M A, P, there are all the apps that have the word map in them. Well, that are maps, <laughs> okay? So that's one way you can search and find your application that you're looking for. If you go one more to the left, you get something called widgets and that's for another day. All right. So now I'm looking at my, uh, I'm gonna switch back to my iPad here. Anybody know what this is called here at the bottom? this line of applications? The dock. It's called the dock, okay? And that's what Apple re refers to it as. How many apps on the iPad can you put on the dock? <laughs> I 
four. A whole lot. <laughs> you can put 13 down there. Now, some of us may have a dock that has a little line right about here somewhere or here. And everything to the right of that line changes over time. It's called the recently used or suggested applications. And it's showing you applications that you use a lot or that you've recently used. For those of you who have that and say, well, maybe I, I choose not to get that because I like a consistent thing down here on the dock. <clears throat> and I guess I should explain what the dock is. The dock is a set of applications that you can put there that remain there no matter what home screen you're on. You'll see how they stay constant there at the bottom. Okay. So what I put down there are the apps I use most often. <clears throat> and just a, a, by the way, if you don't like the suggested, in other words, the little line there, you go to settings. <clears throat> it says home screen and dock. So you go to that particular place and then it says show suggestions or recent apps. I'm going to turn it on just to give you an idea of what it does. By the way, that is not available on the iPhone. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to go back to the home. Oops. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the home screen here. And you see the little vertical line here, right here. So these two apps, they're saying, <coughs> I haven't used that in a long time, but messages, and I think this is called the universe. These two apps, <coughs> change over time, depending on what you're doing on your device. So I'm gonna turn that off, go back to the home screen. And now it just says the 13 apps I have put there. So for those of you who probably may not know how to put apps or move apps around or change their location or combine them, the way we do it on the newer iPads is we put the, your finger at a blank area in the middle. And you press and hold and they start shaking. If you have an older pad with or phone with an older operating system, you do a similar feature, only you hold it on one of the applications. If I hold it there long enough, even on the newer devices, the device, the applications start shaking. And you'll notice that some of the applications have an X on them. Those X's indicate that I can remove the, the application from my device. <clears throat> And what I want to do is bring up the phone as well here. <clears throat> mm -mm. <clears throat> Thank you. 
I have a little technical difficulty, folks, here, so just a minute. <clears throat> I couldn't find little. I'm trying to get my uh, phone to display on the shared screen. <clears throat> Uh-huh. <laughs> now Notice the difference between the iPhone and the iPad. Anybody tell me the difference in terms of the things that are wiggling? You'll notice that it's a minus sign on the iPhone and an X on the iPad. If I go to the iPad and I click the X, it allows me to delete the app from my device. On the other hand, if I go to the iPhone and I put my finger here and I press and hold and they shake, I get a minus sign. Okay. Oops, stop shaking. <clears throat> so if I click it on the stocks minus sign, it says delete app which removes it from the device, but I can remove it from the home screen. And that keeps it on the device, but only shows up in the app library. Okay, so that's the new feature that was added on the iPhones that is not yet available on the iPads. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the iPad now. It's just a bigger screen to work with. Okay, and notice they're, they're shaking. A couple of things that I'd like to cover now are moving the apps around or changing the location, rearranging them for your benefit. So if I've moved this one up to here, okay. And when you're moving them, and I like what, what you try to do that on your device, either iPhone or iPad, just don't put it on top of another one just yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that one off my dock. And if I move one down here to the dock, it kind of separates and makes room where I want to put it. Okay. Remember I said you can put 13 down there. If I try to add one more than 13, it says, no, I'm not gonna do that, okay? Now, if I want this particular application on a different screen, I would click on it and I would drag it to the edge and hold it there. Not that, let's see, see how it's flipping by the various screens.
And when it gets to the screen, I would like to drop it on. And what I'm going to do is drop it on the last one. Okay. <laughs> I really messed it up now. <laughs> I've got this one. And this one. And this one. And this one. I got to do this again. Whoops. Move it to the edge. One, two. I'm going to put it here. And I noticed when I was going by, I had nothing on that screen. <laughs> I'm going to click done. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> If I wanted, um, I have 300 applications on my device. And if I had 300 applications individually listed, like on this page, it would take me a long time to find the app I wanted. Let's say it's on page four, the second one down, and I don't have that kind of memory. So what I did when I ended up with all those apps is I said, gee, I have five apps that are about book reading. And I have uh, 15 game apps, etc. So what I did is I combined them. So, so example, this particular little, it's called a folder, contains the different apps that have to do with reading books. Right? I even have one called Dumb Stuff, <laughs> okay? Which we can cover at some later time, but not right now, okay? So I figured out a name and I put it on those various folders. So here I have um, messages and notes. How about messages and messenger? What if I put those two together? Messenger, by the way, is I think Facebook, and this is Apple, but they're both messaging applications. And the only thing, I'm, that's not the important part. The important part is here, if I drag this one and put it on top of that one, and then release, I have, call, I have a little two apps together, and Apple put a name on them called social networking. And let's say I don't like that name. I don't like social networking. I can click the X here and it has no name now. And now I can type the name. So I have an external keyboard. So I'm just gonna type a uh, message. And I change the name. And if I click outside of this area, now I have a little box called a folder with two applications in it, and it's called message. What I'd like you to do now is try that. And if you have a question as you're doing it, every once in a while, if you try to do it, let me show you something. If I start a magnifier and I put it and I try to put it on files, files kind of slips away from me. Or I try to put it on top of notes, and notes moves over. So when you do it, make sure you put it directly on top of it and then let go. So it's a click or push and drag. Right? And, I'm gonna, and then you can actually remove it like so. So everybody try that for a minute.
Bill, I seem to have a problem with getting it to go to the next page. What an app or just getting it, just getting to see the next page, which? Pardon me? You're trying to move an app to the next page? Well, yeah, like like I'm trying to make okay. you know, a book file. Right, let's let me get them to shake. Okay, so now they're shaking. Yeah. Are you on your iPad or iPhone? iPad. Can you move it? Yeah, you can't move it to this way. Okay, that's but there's no saying. nothing over that way. You have to move it this way, right? And I have to move it to this side. And you move it like halfway in. Well, okay, see, like I had this on my uh, third page. Right. It's the fourth app. And I wanted to get it to the last app on the second page. Okay, you can do that. But I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I finally did it the other way around. I finally did it, but... Okay, so okay, you want to move that? Yeah. So if I'm going to move it over here, um, it's just kind no of room on that page. <laughs> you have to have room on the page. I see. Okay. You but keep a hold of maybe I don't keep a hold of it right. This page is completely full, right? Uh huh. So I can't yeah. put anything more there without another app going to the other on page. Top of it. Mm -hmm. Or going to the other page. Okay. Now this is a weather app. Let me see if I can do this right It's just fun to do because you can't mess anything up. You might put an app on top of another app and end up with a folder. I'm moving. One, Go ahead. One thing I noticed too, like on the dock, the ones past the line that are variables. Yep, you can't move those. No, you can't. But the thing is, they also still appear on your other screen. The exactly. Screen. Exactly. Whereas these other ones don't. You actually move those down, right? That's, I couldn't have said it better. Okay. I just. I'm going to put this one in travel. All right. As I said, if you put two together um, and you don't like what you've done, you can always back it out. I'm going to put two together. I'm going to put files and notes together here. And it's called productivity, they called it. All right. Remember, if I go up here and click or tap, tap this, whoops. Gotta get them shaken. And I can go up and change the name. But if I wanna remove one, now in this case, I just took it out and I still have one in productivity. When I remove the last one, it will remove the folder automatically. And you can put a lot in each one of these, like in games here, I have all these games, but you can, and I have multiple pages of games. And you can move the games from one folder page to another, right?
it takes a little practice, but once you get how far you have to move it and how slowly you have to move it, it works pretty well. And I'm gonna I'm gonna separate out my messages up here again. <clears throat> Okay. I'd like to spend, uh, what's the ma you know, what is the major way you communicate with your device? Most of us, it's the keyboard or Siri. Uh, and I want to spend a little time on Siri. I'm sorry, on the keyboard, <laughs> not on Siri, not today. Um, and to do that, I need to use an application of some kind so we can see the keyboard and work with it, okay? So I'm going to open up the notes application. And I'm going to tap the little pen and pencil that shows up on the note application to get a new note. Mm -mm. Okay. So now I'm looking at a new note. And the only thing you really have to know about the notes application is the first line is the title of the note. So I have the keyboard showing up there. Uh, so I'm gonna type first note, F, I, R, S, T, space, N, O, T, E. To go to a new line, I press return. When I start a new line, it's like a new paragraph. And you notice that the, uh, the two arrows on your device, on the iPhone, it's only one. Okay, but they uh, turn up white with a dark arrow. That indicates that it's a capital letter. And if I type it, you'll notice the keyboard changes to capital letters as well. And if I click it, it makes it a capital A. Now that little icon changes to a dark background and a white outlined arrow. And if you type, it'll be a lowercase. You can tap on that arrow once and it becomes caps. If you tap it twice, we all remember caps lock on a standard key typewriter. If you tap it twice, it makes that arrow with a little underline on it and that's caps lock. So now everything I type until I type that tap that arrow again is gonna be a capital letter. Okay, and when I tap it again, it makes it lowercase. <clears throat> Some new features they've added in the last few releases of the operating system. On your iPads, you have these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, above the letters. If you press the key and pull down, you're gonna get that highlighted or, or uh, 
grayed out object, whatever it is. In this case, it's a five. On the F, it's an and sign. <clears throat> now you don't have that same feature on the iPhone. I just thought I'd bring that up just to show it to you. All right. If I press and hold the E, for example, so I'm pressing and holding it now, and I continue to hold and I slide up and I pick a different form of the letter E. I can go to a different keyboard by clicking the one, two, three at the lower left-hand side, my phone and iPad, and I get this keyboard. And I have that same feature about the grayed out um, items. So if I wanted a back arrow, I would pull and pull down. Now it'll type a back arrow. If I press and hold, let's say, let's say the dollar sign, I get a bunch of different currencies. Okay. If I press the globe on mine, yours may be a happy face. And you get this. And so I get a lot of different faces here. One of the features they added to even the faces, if you press and hold the face, I can give it a different skin color. Okay. So you need to play with that a little bit. Ooh, that doesn't work here, huh? Nope. I want to get back to the ABC keyboard. It's right here. <clears throat> If I want to change the font in some ways, not a lot of fonts, but I can make it a heading font, a subheading font by just clicking the, the, uh, the two A's. The one I really like is this one, the microphone. And this works no matter what you're having to type, if the keyboard shows up, that microphone will be there. So if I type the microphone and I start typing, it's gonna go voice to text. Good morning, class. Period. New line. Hope you're having a great day. Period, new line. The class today, we will be covering many of the iPhone and iPad basic features. Period. And I click the keyboard at the bottom to have it stop. All right. Many people starting using the microphone whenever they need to type and it makes their life a lot easier. Now you have to be careful and you have to go back and see if it's typing than what you said, but it works very nicely. Anything else about the keyboard somebody wants to mention or has a question about? 
or are we all asleep out there? <laughs> okay. Why is it underlining covering many? Is that saying it's a grammar checker instead of a spell checker? I don't know. Let's see. Doesn't tell me. Wow, any. Alternate words. Don't know. This is just the um, iPad, not the iPhone, correct? For what feature are we talking about? No, I just meant the whole, uh, the whole series you've just been doing has been for oh, iPad. No, no. The iPhone, you look at the left-hand screen there, or right-hand screen. Okay. <laughs> right? I'm going to click down. Right? Here's the microphone. Wow. On the iPhone, which I think is even nicer because it's there and I don't need to worry about that tiny keyboard. Right? Oh. Now, we don't have the feature of the pull down on the phone, but we do have the happy face here. So I can and make. Sorry. That's under notes now that anytime the keyboard shows up, this will be there. But I'm I happen I'm happen to be using the notes application. Oh, 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 I didn't realize that. So okay. is this email also? Say again, please. Uh, oh, uh, it's not for email, it's just for texting. No, emailing as well. Oh. When the keyboard shows up, you should have a microphone down here. Let's see hookups. Okay. Sorry, just. Oh, I found. Do, do you have the keyboard? I do. Um, you have a microphone right down here in the lower right? I'm just trying to write an email. Um, right. No, I don't. Why? Let me. Uh, um, is it what, no, I'm I, do, what I'm going to do is go to my email program. Sorry, go to what? I'm uh, going to go to my email program. And I'm going to write one. Okay. And I'm going to click down here. Where's my keyboard? <laughs> there it is. So there's my keyboard and you see there's a microphone here, happy face here. Okay, I don't, I don't think mine, mine has it. Okay, that's okay. Mine's an old phone. Oh, depends on what operating system, how old's the phone, you know, kind of thing. What's your model, do you remember? Uh, oh, was it uh, SE? Um... Oh, it's only three or four years old then. Oh, you should, you should have. Uh... I just probably can't. Okay, if you're looking at your keyboard, is the key, are you seeing your keyboard? I do. But you don't have a microphone on it? No, no. Oh, have you set up, are you, have you ever used Siri? No. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's why. We'll get to that. You have to have oh. Siri working. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's it's it. a subset of Siri. Okay. So I click the microphone. Bill Crow. And then I'll use that guy. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> and then if I want to type here, ooh. 
כמובן. Wow. I have to reset my device because my keyboard's not showing up the way it should. That's okay. All right. The other feature on the keyboard, and I have to get it on my device here. The other feature of the keyboard on the iPad is this predictive, this line here. And again, we'll go look at that in a minute because if you don't have that, you should. And if I start typing, I say this. It says, oh, you wanted to type this. And then you could say, oh, I wanted to type is. The, and now I want to type day, so I'll just hit a day, D, and it has day. And I want to type four. So many people don't even, especially on the phones, they're using predictive all the time because then they don't have to type all the words. All right. I'm going to switch to the phone and we're going to go to, I want to show you some of the settings for your keyboard. If we go to settings And we scroll down to, guess where, general. And we scroll down to where it says keyboard. And we type that, tap that. Okay. I have predictive turned on, check spelling turned on, enable caps lock to be turned on, auto capitalize, that turns it on at the beginning of each sentence, smart punctuation. If I tap the space bar twice, like in the left-hand screen of your, that you're looking at, tap, tap, it puts a period at the end of my typing, okay? So if everybody is there, I hope you are, you can even do something called text replacement. And that says, if you type something, and it matches what's in the list of type of replacements, it will replace what you just typed with the replacement. So I'm gonna tap on text replacement. And I have one that says, if I tap an O followed by an at sign, I will get my email address printed. If I tap WTC followed by a space, it will tap type William T. Crow. If I tap type two at signs, it will tap my Gmail address. If I type IWBT, it's, it will type, I will be there. So let me try some of these. I'm gonna try the at signs and the O at signs. So I'm gonna to go to a note I'm going to start a new note and I'm going to tap add sign, add sign, to do, do, followed by a space. And you see what it did? So now that you've seen how that works, you may want to do that for something you type a lot of, like your email address. And you do that in settings, general, keyboard, auto replace. And of course, there's a plus sign there. If I tap the plus sign, it 
create a shortcut that will automatically expand the phrase. Uh, hi all. And I'll make it H A. And I save it. So now if I tap wherever, whenever I tap H A followed by a space bar, it will type Hio. Make sense? Barbara, go ahead. You have a question? <laughs> Turn on your microphone if you're trying to speak. Hi. When you type something into shortcut, how do you convert that then? I, I'm a little confused on this. OK, we're, we're in text replacement. In text replacement, let me get back there then. Okay. Good. Text replacement, and then you have, well, mine is on an O, but what do I want to go to? Well, tap the plus sign to add something. Oh, okay. I see. Then you go to shortcut. We well, tap the phrase you want the shortcut to be lead you to. So. Oh, okay. So if I wanted to put my email in there, I would put just your, put my yeah. email. Go ahead. Put your email in there. Okay. And when you're done with your email, you click, shortcut. Where, you click where it says shortcut and you type what you want the shortcut to be. Okay, I see now, okay, thank you. <laughs> Did, once you guys start thinking like Apple wants you to think, <laughs> right. it works. <laughs> That's a trick. <laughs> That's the trick, you got it, exactly. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thanks for asking, okay. Enable dictation, make sure that's on. Maybe that's what we have to turn on and maybe not. don't have to turn on Siri. Okay. There is a feature for those of you who um, have had Androids before, it's called slide to type. If you put your finger on a letter and then go to the next letter without lifting your finger, it's called slide to type. So if you want the word yes, you go Y, you slide to E, and you slide to S. Let's see if I have that turned on on my iPad. Give me the keyboard. Y, E, that's not going to work. Okay, so I'm going to do it with my finger. Y, E, S, no. Nope. <laughs> I may not have that feature turned on on the key one. Let's see if it's on the iPad, on the iPhone here. Notes. <laughs> Didn't do too good a job with that. Y, E, S. Okay. And it did that without lifting my finger. Y, E, S. Okay. Some people get really good at that. Any questions about the keyboard? Let me check something. A couple of things I'm going to sound to everybody who's at the meeting today. Um, let me switch cameras here.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to ship you this this guy. All right. Which is the status icons, you know, the little icons that appear at the top of the screen, bottom of the screen. And so these are kind of general symbols that we see all over the place. So when you see something you, and you wonder what it is, you're going to have that. I'll also send the gestures to everyone. So you don't have to send me a special one. Okay. I'd like to send you this sheet. And it's probably the most important sheet you can get. Can you read that? Is it backwards or forwards? It's too blurred to read. It's too blurry to read. <laughs> oh, it says things to know about your iPhone and iPad. And I'm hoping every one of my students can raise their hand on this and say, my Apple ID is and my password is without looking it up. <laughs> okay. What's your email address and what's its password? And what's your unlock code? And I, I, really, I really hope you take this piece of paper to heart and write it down and, and commit those to memory. It just makes using your iPad so much easier, okay? The last item on the list is your network passcode. When you're, when you're, um, when anyone comes to visit you, they say, hi, grandma, hi, aunt, hi, aunt, whatever, grandpa. The second thing they say is, what's your Wi-Fi passcode? <laughs> if I'm not saying this correctly, I think that's, that's what happens. And what I do is I, I look on my modem, my router that came from Comcast or uh, who's the other company? frontier now and I write down that long number and then I have it so I don't need to crawl around and look for it when they arrive okay so, Bill yeah go ahead I I was teaching a class last week of people that are more beginners than coming to your classes yeah and somebody had a question that I couldn't answer they uh -oh. had an iPad that was in a desk drawer for two years and they brought it to class and they didn't remember the unlock code and they didn't know how to get started. I know there's with the uh, Apple ID, there is a, I forgot my password, but if they don't know the unlock code to begin with and they probably don't have a computer, what do they do? Even if they have a computer, it's a brick, it's a brick. It's unusable. I had a uh, iPad donated to the uh, refer project and I couldn't get into it because I didn't have the unlock code, the four or six digit, whatever it is to, you have to put in when you first turn on your device. And there's no way to break that and Apple won't help you. You can take it to Apple, and if you have proof of ownership, then they will help you, but they will not help you otherwise. So I, I actually called up the person that brought it in, and they gave me the person who donated it, and I went to visit them. And I said, would you please unlock, I'll, I'll bring it in the house, you can look at it, you, I'll tell you how to unlock it and reset it, because I couldn't get into it. So, Bill, there's no way to do it. Oh, wow. Okay. So, that's why we write it down <laughs> many places. Go ahead, Ann. Is there any such thing on the iPhone? No. Same thing. Uh, to unlock? Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a way to set it up to put in an unlock code. You want to know how to do that? Uh, <laughs> would I just need my, my uh, six... In my my um, passcode. Yeah, that's the, yes. You would just need a passcode. Okay, that's right. Doesn't need to be the same as the one on your iPad. It could be different. Right. But you need it. The way you do that, and I'm going to do it on my iPhone there. So I go to, of course, go to settings. And you go to where it says passcode. Uh, touch or passcode. 
or just passcode or face ID and passcode. Okay, and you tap that. If you have one, you have to put it in. If you don't have one, right? Wait a minute, Bill, where'd you go to now? I went to settings. I went yeah. to settings. And then there, it says passcode, but it could say uh, fingerprint or thumb ID or something like that, touch ID and passcode, or it's okay. It could say face ID and passcode, or it could just say passcode. Not password. Not password. It should be passcode, I believe. Oh, I don't have that. It should be down okay. under Siri search. Yep, I got it. Okay. okay. And then, okay. And then that's your face. There should be a, an option there for the um, the passcode. Oh, there it is. See where it says turn, yours should say turn on passcode. And before you even do that, I would like, if you're gonna do it, write it down, what you would like to use. So I'm gonna turn mine off. You're not showing your screen. It doesn't show? No. Oh, it doesn't. No, so it does. It's not going to let you see what I'm doing. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> see where it says turn off passcode? Yours should say turn on. If you don't have one. And then it comes up with like six digits across. Yes. You can change. You see where it says uh, options? on that six digits across and you can change it. It says passcode options. And so instead of putting six in, you tap passcode options and I'm gonna choose four digit. Oh, it's showing you that one, right? And then I put in my passcode. We're not so seeing your screen. I don't want you to see my passcode, but you are seeing. We're just seeing you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. <laughs> okay. Let me go back. Okay. That's better. That's. <laughs> I go face ID and passcode there. Now you, I'm going to put in my passcode because I have one. And then I scroll clear down in that screen where it says, yours will say turn on passcode. Mine said, I want to change it. And when you get there, when it says turn on passcode, you get a screen that looks like that one. And if you don't want it to be six digits long, and that's six numbers, you could change, you could make it much more complicated. You could say chain passcode options and you can make it alphanumeric, uh, just numeric or a four digit code. I've made mine a four digit code, okay? And then for privacy reasons, you don't see the keyboard, the numeric keyboard on the screen on, my device and I'm going to put it in and it says change it and then it wants me to do it twice. Whoa. What's it saying? This password can be easily guessed. I know that. <laughs> You're not going to let me use that one any longer? So I'm not going to change it then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But it's not, don't make it one, 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 or one, two, three, four. Okay. But be sure you write that down because as I've, ex I've explained, if you change it and 
you forget it, you have to prove you own the device in the Apple store to get it changed. All right, I was going through with some of the things I'm going to send you. I will be sending you that to everybody that's in the class today. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is, let me find the sheet. I have just a quick question. Absolutely. Yep. Do you, what do you recommend that we um, have the secure for one minute or immediately? You know, it says require passcode immediately. Oh. After a minute after five minutes, you recommend immediately? <laughs> well, mine's immediate, but what they're saying is if you turn off your phone and turn it back on again within a particular amount of time, it will not or will require the passcode. So if I turn it, so if I turn it off immediately I, when I turn it on, I have to put in the passcode again. Yeah. If you change it to three minutes or five minutes, that's good. You know, then you don't have to continually have to put it in. If you even a minute, you know, they say a minute. I mean, that's better than immediately, probably. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll change my. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, what I want to do is cover uh, a review of what the new. Uh, announcement was from Apple. Okay. And let me switch my screen to me. Okay. So they have a new iPhone 13 Pro. Yeah. And I just, I covered with you dramatically more powerful camera, all new OELED display with ProMotion. And we're going to hear all about this from Sharon next week. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you getting one? No. <laughs> the iPhone 13, not Pro, so it's a little smaller, right? Uh, our most advanced dual camera system ever. The Pro has three cameras. The iPhone 13 just has two, and a bit brighter LED, faster chip and a huge leap in battery life. They came out with a new watch, right? It's called the iPhone Watch Series 7. The largest, most advanced, always on retina display. And the key there is always on. You know, my, my phone turns off, and then when I twist my wrist, it turns on. This one's always on. Most adorable iPhone ever. Uh, breathtaking health innovation. The big health innovation there is it, it senses your um, blood oxygen level in addition to EKG and, and pulse. And, um, and it's a faster charging device. They came out with an iPad mini. It has their new chip in it. It's an all new screen design. It has 5G capability if you get that. And a uh, ultra wide uh, format camera with stage center. And I believe that's similar to the stage features I've seen in the past where if you're taking a portrait picture, it blacks out the background and it just has the uh, person you're taking a picture of with a black background. And they say, well, this is again, uh, Apple's advertisement, new for, for new uh, now in four gorgeous colors. <laughs> so the case is comes in colors. And they've come out with a new standard iPad with the wider format camera and a uh, and it doesn't and it has 64 gigabytes as the entry level machine. So that was the 
basis or basics of the announcement. Any questions on that? Yes, Bill. Um, you stated the new iPhone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you said the, the new I, or Apple Watch 7 has a blood oxygen meter. Well, the 6 also has a blood oxygen. Does it? Yes, I, it does. I didn't know. I have a 6. Okay, the 5 does too. So I'm not sure what additional health features it has then. Okay, my other question is uh, last week, all the news media, and I also I got information from Apple saying we should update to operating system 14.8 because Correct. of a hack. Possible. And I noticed you don't have 14.8. I don't? No, mm. not, a, not in your, I, your iPad. Oh or my goodness, I better, I better do something here. <laughs> don't you recommend 14.8 to everybody? Yes, I do. Okay. Even you. <laughs> I haven't had, I haven't had my iPad plugged in uh -huh. and turned on overnight. But you're right, I don't. So I okay. need to install that. Thank you. I wanted to clarify that. Thank yep. you. That's good. By the way, does everybody know how to do an update if it's not, if you, the way in which they encourage you to do an update is plug in your device and just hit the power button to shut the screen off mm -hmm. and leave it on overnight. Okay, so mine didn't do that. So you'll see it on my screen there. Mine doesn't say eight either. But I have automatic updates turned on, but I haven't had it plugged in overnight. They also and may be doing rolling updates. Say again? It might be rolling. They may not have updated everybody even with automatic turn. -back. That's true. And it may not get to you. Yeah, because I don't have an eight yet either. And that doesn't say we're waiting on one or anything. Well, if you tap um, software update, it should check to see. And it should say 14.8. Now, you may may not be able to get that depending on the age of your device as well. well I'll get one. Then. So I can download and install that. Boop. I got to put in my passcode. Okay, and now it says update requested, <laughs> okay. Any questions about that one? No, but I do have a question relating back to the iWatch 5. You said it does blood oxygen? I, that was six. Oh, I, I thought, thought you said I thought you said five did. No, somebody said five did, or six did, right? Did somebody say six? <laughs> Who said that? Yes, I said, I said six does, I, and I don't think five does. That's but correct. Said, I have a five, you, and it does not. Yeah, so six does. I'm sorry. And, so there's some additional features. Maybe it uh, wakes you. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> The one I think we're all waiting for is the blood pressure one. And I don't think they can do that one, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. The robotic bartender. A popular uh, bar now has a robotic bartender installed. The guy come, a guy comes to get a drink and the robot asks, what's your IQ? The man replays 130. So the robot predicts, so the robot proceeds to make a conversation with a, with a astro that's uh, related to physics, astronomy, and so on. The man listens intently and thoroughly, right? This is really cool, thought the man with an IQ of 130. Another guy comes in for a drink, and the robot asks, what's your IQ? The man responds 120. So the robot starts talking about, you know, the Super Bowl, dirt bikes, and so on. The man saw himself, thought to himself, wow, this is really cool. A third guy comes into the bar, and as with the others, the robot asks, what's your IQ? 
The man replies, 80. The robot, <laughs> the robot says, so how are things in Ireland? <laughs> I'm sorry. Funny. I could have said I could have I could have said Poland, but I decided <laughs> to, the first joke was about Poland. <laughs> okay, everyone. I thought I was gonna say, well, what do you want to drink? And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> now that's just the Irish, right? <laughs> What would you like with your beer? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, folks. Been a good day. Hopefully, you learned a couple of things to fill in that collage. It's All amazing. Right. There's still more to learn, even though we've been here. I know. <laughs> we pick up here next week. Thank you very much. Appreciate we'll start, it. We're we'll covering some Thank of you. the intrinsic things about settings. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All Thank right, you. everybody. Take Bye. care. Have a good rest of the weekend, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Bye, Bye. Anne. Bye. <laughs> Take care, Anne. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow, Barb. And Barb, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Bill. Thank you very, thank you very much. Right. I really enjoyed the class. Thank good. you. Good.